Guys, we've got major stuff here in regards to some situations that have been evolving in terms of Ohio State recruiting the Brock Glenn commitment, the Dijon Johnson D commitment, unfortunately, and just a few other things. I'll give my final Caleb Down statement. I'll give my final Richard Young statement. But first, yesterday Ohio State gained a commit and they also lost one. So Brock Glenn is the quarterback the Buckeyes will be taking. Of course, we remember the little you know 2023 QB saga between Austin Novosad and Brock Glenn. Austin Novosad is thought of as the higher upside, more talented quarterback. But this was a situation where Ohio State and Ryan Day, they knew they needed to land a QB. And the Novosad situation is a really weird one. Because if you go back and you actually remember what happened with Novasad, he was committed to Baylor. Ohio State identified him, you know, about a month and a half ago. He was probably ranked 300th in the country. And the question started, would Novasad flip to Ohio State or stay at Baylor? A few weeks pass. He says he's going to make his decision around the Elite 11. Uh, Texas A&M offers him, which was a major offer for him. Now he's deciding between Baylor, Ohio State, and A&M. Then a few weeks later, Notre Dame gets involved, and now it's AM, Ohio State, Notre Dame. But it was just a weird situation with Nova Sad. And I, you know, I do think Ohio State in a perfect world would rather have Nova Sad, but it's still very important they get a solid four-star commit. And Brock Glenn, in my opinion, in terms of his Ohio State career, more of like a Jack Miller type career where he kind of is a depth piece. And then very likely uh, transfers out after a few years. You do need to land a QB every single year because there's a very real scenario next year if Devin Brown does beat out Kyle McCord, McCord immediately transfers and the backup quarterback becomes Brock Glenn who is certainly capable of being a good backup. And it's a guy where, you know, you've got to have that depth. And Brock Glenn is a solid four-star, and it was a good pickup for Ohio State. But overall, yesterday, I would say it's mainly bad news. You know, you get a depth piece QB, and in exchange, you lose your top cornerback uh, commit, Dijon Johnson, decommitting yesterday, very likely headed to Florida, um, I'm not even sure what happened with D. John Johnson, honestly. There were a few weeks ago, someone was telling me that he was, uh, you know, rumored to be going to o Oklahoma. There was a rumor that he was going to decommit and go there. So this had been brewing for multiple weeks at this point. His commitment really flimsy. And I'm not going to, you know, get into the whole NIL thing. I'll talk about that in a little bit with Florida and whether or not that played a part. Of course, we know last year, Ohio State had Terrence Brooks, who was a top 100 cornerback, and then on National Signing Day, Terrence Brooks, it was rumored around $50,000 from Texas to go to that program. He ends up decommitting. I don't know if this is one of those situations. You know, this is a Florida kid. He stays and goes to Florida, but I do know Florida's been very involved in NIL. And once again, guys, I always reiterate, NIL is such a mess when it comes to recruiting. And that brings us to Richard Young and my final statement on the whole Richard Young thing. Alabama at this point, basically the, the Death Star when it comes to recruiting. Uh, Richard Young, Ohio State identifies him extremely early in the process, uh, early last year. And it was Ohio State was always the leader. Alabama was in second place. And then something just completely changed with his recruitment. And we actually heard reports earlier this summer that Richard Young was silently committed to Alabama and one of these stipulations was Nick Saban did not allow Richard Young to visit Ohio State. And I think if you look at Richard Young's visit history, I don't think he's visited Ohio State since like last year. Now maybe I'm wrong on that, but... His recruitment in March took a turn where everyone was like, all right, we lead for him, we lead for him. There's been so much invested. Ohio State doesn't land an elite running back in 2022. They're focused on Richard Young. And just something changes. And the rumor was that Richard Young silently committed to Bama again. And Saban said, you're not allowed to visit Ohio State. 
And I honestly think that rumor was true. Now, about a week ago, or maybe even less than a week ago, it comes out and on three puts Oregon now as the favorite for Richard Young. You know, after Alabama lands a superstar running back, Justice Haynes, who originally had, uh, you know, been rumored to be going to Georgia. He's from Georgia. He goes to Alabama, five-star caliber running back. And, uh, you know, Richard Young, for whatever reason, ends up committing to Alabama. So was their NIL involved in Richard Young? If Oregon was involved and they were offered offering him something, you would have to think there might be, which allows me to speculate that Nick Saban, who was so against giving these kids money and saying it was illegal, he might have joined the dark side. I don't know for sure, but this could be a situation where Jimbo gets into the feud, Jimbo Fisher and Saban get into a feud, and Nick Saban's like, you really want me to cheat? Watch this. And if he's really cheating, because really, there's no leg for any of us to stand on because so many of these programs are blatantly cheating. I don't know if there was NIL involved with Richard Young in Alabama, uh, but it, it is certainly makes me speculate if Oregon is involved where you know Oregon is offering money. I mean, that you, you know that. Um, and then Richard Young ends up still going to Alabama with a five-star commit already there. I mean, you got to start wondering about that situation. It gets pretty weird. So Alabama right now just out of control with, well, just going crazy. I mean, they're landing everyone. They have the highest average. It's ridiculous. Uh, as for Ohio State, let me, you know what? Let me get to the Caleb Downs situation. So Caleb Downs, we know at this point, did commit to the University of Alabama. There's a few things I want to say about it. Number one, I'll talk about why people were mad. So when I say, you know, that I just had like a 15-hour phone conversation, there's a level of satire that you think would be detected, you know, in that statement. And at the end of the day, guys, I'm an entertainer. A lot of my fans know that. They realize it. But there were some people that were upset about how the Caleb Downs situation played out. Let me just tell you what I know about Caleb Downs. Number one, oh, it's so unfortunate because there was, in my opinion, zero NIL involved. Caleb Downs, any other year, if Ohio State did not have a completely inexperienced defensive back coaching staff, any other year, if we just had a little track record, Caleb Downs would be a Buckeye. But at the end of the day, you can't fault Caleb Downs for going to Alabama over a new Ohio State who's, you know, defensive staff who has really struggled the past few years, doesn't have the overall resume that Alabama's defensive staff does. You can't fault him. There's also, of course, the rumor that Caleb Downs' dad was obsessed with Saban, and that's a whole thing. Um, so I don't know how much that played into it. But either way, you know, Caleb Downs is a beast, and I'm sure he's going to be developed into a first-round pick. And it's just so sad. Ohio State's inexperienced defensive back coaching staff is really struggling to land these elite kids because they just don't have the resume, the track record right now to compete with some of these other schools. And I really think any other year if Ohio State has just somebody back there that's put a few players into the NFL, has a good track record, um, you know, Caleb Downs would be a Buckeye. I mean, Ohio State, they recruited Caleb Downs so well. They went into the, they had the last visit. And it's just, I mean, I think the dad, you know, the dad, there was a rumor that the dad was obsessed with Saban. I think that played into it. I do. But we can't sit here and criticize the kid for picking that defensive staff over Ohio State's based on what Ohio State's done the past few years because the defense has been atrocious. Outside of 2019, we've been atrocious. So that is that situation. And then the Dijon Johnson, it's tough, man. I mean, it's just, it's NIL. Uh, the Guys, like, I, all these rumors with NIL, like, you hear the Miami fans talking about how they're going to flip Carnell Tate and Ennis. I mean, it's just, uh, I, I can't do it with NIL. Like, why is the, but again, it's like, the the sad reality is we're one of the only, I mean, Michigan is like us too. Like, we're the programs, Penn State as well. We're not cheating. I mean, if we, like, if somebody says every program is doing it, show me the deal. 
I because they get rumored everywhere else. Everywhere else. We hear about the $9 million deal in Miami for the quarterback. Tennessee. Oregon. Alabama, we haven't heard anything. We do know they gave Eli Ricks a million dollars to transfer there. And then and then they say, oh, every program is doing it. I want to see an Ohio State deal where Ohio State paid a recruit NIL money to come here. I have yet to see one because they don't exist. Now, are we at a crossroads to where Ohio State is going to be forced to start doing this? Because it just doesn't seem like the NCAA is going to do anything. And it's spiraled so far out of control where, I mean, Texas A&M should have gotten a death penalty at this point. And that not only do they not get a death penalty, they get rewarded by, by getting the number one class. And now, guys, Texas A&M, oh, they're off to the races. How about Malachi Nelson visiting Texas A&M now? How great is that? Yeah, no, Malachi Nelson is visiting Texas A&M because he loves Jimbo Fisher's ability to develop quarterbacks. That's why he's visiting, yeah. It's just so bad for these kids too. Like, imagine if that would be the number, that would be the dead giveaway that NIL is bad for kids. If you go, if you're Malachi Nelson, you can be developed by Lincoln Riley, who put back-to-back -back number one overall picks in the NFL, who turned Jalen Hurts into a second round pick when he would have been a sixth round pick if he stayed at Bama. And you go to Jimbo Fisher. Jimbo Fisher, guys. Oh my God, he's literally, Jimbo Fisher is the Antichrist. He is a horrible, horrible person. He is a serial liar, delusional serial liar. I saw something, I saw a headline that made me laugh. There's no way I'll be able to find it because I think so many, I have so many screenshots. Guys, I think I have 6,000 photos on here. I'm not going to be able to find it, but it was like, I remember the headline. It was how Jimbo Fisher you know, uh, handles negative recruiting. You know how he handles negative recruiting? He just offers another million dollars. That's how we, and I don't want to turn this into, you know, just me hating or whatever. It's because it's every team is doing it now, but Texas A&M was the first team to go off the rails. And unfortunately, guys, with Ohio State's class, if they can get, Dave, it's, I mean, I, I would be surprised if they landed Damon Wilson at this point with NIL, if he turns NIL, because Alabama's also in it for him. And I, I'm not 100% sure Alabama is cheating, but that Richard Young recruitment, it's almost like a dead giveaway. Let's be honest, it is almost like a dead giveaway. I wonder if there'll be a number that comes out of that Richard Young recruitment we get, you know, if Bama gave him something. Uh, and, and But it's not like we have any legs to stand on because all these other SEC teams are cheating. Why wouldn't Bama also cheat? It makes sense. Um, so Ohio State... Maybe an elite pass rusher, Mateo Uilangile. I heard there was a rumor that he was visiting Alabama, uh, so that's great. Um, and maybe they get Damon Wilson. I don't know. And then the situation with the cornerbacks, Jermaine Matthews is just lighting up these camps. It's just unbelievable that Two Four Seven Sports refuses to move him up. It really is so disrespectful. For a kid to go out, compete, and basically be the best player at every camp, totally outplay any five stars. If this kid was born in the state of Alabama, he would be ranked inside the top 30. But he's born in Ohio and 247 just refuses to move him up. It's so disrespectful and it's so sad. Jermaine Matthews might actually be better than Dijon Johnson. And that's not even me being a homer about it. Dijon Johnson, I would have loved to have kept, certainly. But Jermaine Matthews, every camp he goes to, it is crazy. What an unbelievable player he is. And Ohio State, the other news, they did land their 2023 quarterback. And, and, and I, you know, just to, to brush everything aside, my expectation is Brock uh, Glenn does not start a single game at Ohio State. Uh, that's just based off of Dylan Rayola being the 2024 quarterback and Devin Brown being the 2022 quarterback. This is a depth piece. I'm being honest with you guys. That's what it is. Uh, Brock Glenn is a depth piece. So the recruiting, you know, we've heard other rumors. Mark Fletcher. The, the other thing that Ohio State, the other problem, it's the running backs. I guess they're going to hope there's a transfer portal guy. I know Rayola is going to be on some of these 2024 kids. There's the, Ohio State... 
has to land an elite running back in 2024. It's, I mean, listen, look at our last classes. It has to be, if you're an elite running back, you look at Ohio State's offense, Dylan Rayola, you know, the receivers. That's, a, that's an attractive place to be in. And there's no running backs in 2023 or 2022 that you're going to have to really contend with. So you would think either through the transfer portal or in the class of 2024, Ohio State will land an elite running back um, for 2024. So guys, it, things are, they're, it's struggling. It's NIL. You don't want to, it's NIL and it's also a, an inexperienced defensive staff that's being negative recruited. You know, other teams are saying they're inexperienced. That's part of it as well. They have to prove themselves. That's kind of one of the narratives we're taking out from this when it comes to the current struggles on the recruiting trail. You want to keep every, there's also rumors with Noah Rogers and NC State, by the way. I don't know how real that is. We know NC State, they're the in-state school. I think Brian Hartline will be able to keep Noah Rogers personally, um, but I mean, there's at this point we're hearing basically daily rumors about Ohio State commits. It's not good, so we will see what happens, guys. But either way, make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm of course the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.